Hello everyone, we are Davian Sky and hello from Scotland. We are in Scotland, we are on the Isle of Skye and over the next six or so days we're actually going to be hiking the Skye Trail which is a multi-day trail and stay tuned to see all of the beautiful views and everything we get up to. This is the Sky Trail. It's a 128 kilometer unmarked trail that takes you through the most breathtaking areas on the Isle of Skye. Most people hike from north to south, but we started in the south in a town called Broadford. We flew directly from Halifax to Edinburgh, hopped in a rental, and headed to Aziz to grab some last minute supplies. We made our way through the beautiful Glen Cove before setting up our tent in Broadford. We also ate the Cafe Sia, just down from our campsite. They have great pizza. This is where we camped last night. So this is my 15 year old Eureka tent and I'm kind of regretting bringing it because it is not very waterproof anymore. This is what we slept on last night. It just came right through and today we're gonna see if we can find a tarp or something to kind of mitigate this situation. It's uh, near the end of August right now and uh, in Canada we've been having a very hot summer Scotland is cold, it feels very cold right now. So we're all, all quite bundled. So this is the campsite right here. And there's a hardware store right there. And I just picked these up. Um, their tarps were way too heavy, so this is uh, gonna have to make do. Currently 10 past 11, and we're setting off for the day. These are massive packs. It's not that heavy though. Uh, well, no, it kind of is. <laughs> How are you feeling? Not limber enough yet. <laughs> I feel like I just got off a red eye, sat in the car, haven't slept for two days, made it to the campsite, and all of our stuff is just like everywhere. My first time trying this whole that was pretty good. water system. No problem. And we're off. It's got trail. officially left the road. We walked a little bit outside of Broadford and now we're on to a natural walking trail, hiking trail. The plan today, loosely, is to get to Torrin, which is 20 kilometers. We might do a little more. We'll see how we're feeling when we get there. Sheep! Let's take one home for Toby. About uh, seven kilometers in, and the trail is very wet. It's almost like walking through a river. Uh, thankfully, my feet are still dry right now. I don't think scholars are, she's not wearing waterproof sneakers. But this is pretty much a river with some really muddy bits. We are just hiking kind of along and down Ben Aminhoi, and then Lock. Is Hort is in front of us, and we're gonna be going down to the water and kind of going along to Tort. Lots of uh, Gaelic names around here. Sun came out, so we're gonna have a little lunch at this spot. These are ruins from Boreg, which uh, they were evicted by Lord MacDonald so that he could have. Sheep here. In 1853, Lord MacDonald, a Scottish Highland Lord, forcibly cleared much of Skye, including the communities of Boreg and Suishnish, to make way for sheep. This was part of the Highland Clearances, a mid 19th century practice of evicting people from their land. Many were relocated or emigrated to places like Canada, the US, Australia, and New Zealand, where their descendants live today. The 
if the weather is good tomorrow, we're gonna hike that big mountain over there, up and over it. Susnish is just where we left and we're gonna be heading into Torin right now, but uh, Susnish is, there. all of the houses were, like everybody was kicked out of their houses during the Highland Clearances and like burned to the ground, which is quite sad. So like that whole area that we just hiked um, from the two towns that were basically kicked out and burned. It was so beautiful, but also like, I don't know, just a very emotional area. Just over 20 kilometers, made it into Torin. Gonna try to find a campsite now. Amy's place, cafe, not open. Oh geez. Just making our campsite outside of Torin tonight. There was a little nice spot down the road there that was flat, but we wanted to be more secluded. So, nice spot with the, by the river up here. Mountains all around us. Ashley's just up on the hill there. Tonight's dinner, three cheese, sausage, and lasagna. How was today? It was good. There yeah. was lots of animals. There was lots of water. Lots of crazy weather changes, but overall very good. My feet are just very like soaked all the way through. Um, so I'm trying to dry them out. David said I have to dry them out every night if I'm gonna be silly and wear sneakers. <laughs> But I have to because my Achilles tendonitis, I struggle to find good hiking shoes these days. It was just a really beautiful, beautiful day. And like, I think that this is the lesser view half of the Sky Trail. And today was filled with good views. So it's only gonna get better. Very true. Midges this morning are absolutely insane. This has been an incredible campsite spot. We were very fortunate not to have too much wind last night. And now this morning, we are going to be heading over this mountain past behind me. So the Sky Trail, technically you can, they recommend going between um, Elgol and Torin. And Elgol is actually a great spot for resupply too. However, we are omitting that because there is David keeps calling it a detour, but it's about the same distance, but it's just like way more epic for the experienced uh, experienced hikers, where you can climb uh, Bla Ben, which is one of the famous Colin mountains here in the Isle of Skye. I believe it's one of the, like, the most alpine mountains in Scotland in general. Um, so it's a popular uh, Colin Monroe where you can go up and then over and then we will reconnect with the sky trail on the other side it's a big day we have hopefully promising weather and then the next two days after this also are looking good so this is very exciting because we won't actually be doing the route to Elgol from Torin uh, we can't say what it's like but from what we've read it's mostly like a coastal walk you there's some paths and some road walking as well and it gives you great views of some of the islands like Rum muck, uh, egg, and canna as well. But I believe we're gonna have an even more incredible view from the top of these mountains because they give you a view of all of the other mountains around, which is called the Coolins. I should have said that too, is that the mountain range here is called the Coolins, is this is just gonna be one of them and we'll have a view of all the others. So nice right now. It's gorgeous, oh my goodness. We might have to put some black on. <laughs> All right, we made it. We're at the bottom of Bla Ben. Gonna hike this 920 meter high Monroe. So you might be able to see kind of where we're going and there's a few people up there. So 
so we made it to this kind of bowl area, little balsamic kind of thing. And we're heading up to the top of this behind us. And there's a few different ways. I feel like this way is a little bit more gradual, where this is just kind of straight up. You can kind of see there's some people up on the top there. This is Slip City. Looks crazy. Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> We're never getting off this mountain. Yeah. Your foot right there, right, right and then there. yeah, where it is, and then use your other hand, like both hands, on that. Uh, oh, this one yeah, here. Oh. and pull yourself up. Woo. A little action. We made it to the top. Whoa. Beauty. Yay. Oh, my goodness, and this view. Wow. It took us all day, but we did it. We did it. Okay, making our way down now. It's been a pretty slow day. We keep stopping and taking photos because it's just so beautiful. Uh, we've only done, I think about seven kilometers and we've been going seven hours, so very slow. We're quite far behind. I think we might um, shorten our distance today and camp at the Bothy at the bottom of this mountain. For now we're gonna go down the ridge of the mountain. This epic, epic ridge. This is gonna be a little scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Terrifying. Between these two peaks, it's an extremely sketchy crossing. Well, you have to stay to the left side, I guess, if you're going down. But that was super dangerous. Very dangerous. going and going. It's taking us forever to get down here. Welcome to Midgey Town. There's a big cloud around you, Skyler. Oh, Jesus. Oh. The Bothy over there, it looks kind of busy, occupied, so this is it for tonight. We set up camp here. This is home for tonight. Full of midges. Full of midges. High spirits though. So we're feeling good. So are we recording up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is fine. This is fine.
<laughs> they really show up in video. It's nuts. There's so many. They're so teeny. They Setting off today at a more reasonable time, 7.30 in the morning. Today, I mean, the goal is to get to Portree, which is going to be about 30 kilometers for us. Uh, so we'll see what happens, because we're not doing <laughs> We're not moving the fastest lately. The midges were really bad last night, and then the temperature dropped, and it's absolutely freezing this morning, and uh, there's no midges. But now that the sun has came up, the midges are back. <laughs> so if you're ever doing this hike, you definitely need a midgey net. And uh, I think Skylar might actually have lost hers. You got it? Nice. It's a nice home here. It looks kind of lived in. Yeah, it's probably seasonal, I'd say. There's no vehicle and there's not a lot of uh, not really a road to get road here. Road to get here, yeah. The sun is up. Oh. It's crazy. A flare, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh my god. So the Gitchen Path uh, Trail is amazing. Amazing views of the mountains and the layers of mountains and waterfalls. And it's been pretty, like, not too boggy, like a few boggy spots. But now we're coming out to a feast for uh, sore eyes. And that's Skligakin down there which is a hotel and restaurant and I think pub. And it's an iconic spot to stop and take photos. If you're just driving around Sky, there's like this beautiful bridge and the mountain and we're about to go down there and see civilization for kind of the first time in a few days. So it's exciting. Hello. Oh, my, as my stomach rumbles. This was a very misleadingly long valley. We made it, here's the hotel. Look at this mountain. Gonna go see if we can get a beer, maybe some lunch. This is exciting. So now we get to the fun part where all of the tourists get to see how badly we smell. <laughs> but this is a statue of Norman Colley and John Mackenzie. Mackenzie, which are apparently pioneers of the Coolin Mountains and they named a bunch of them and they were quite the unlikely duo. I believe one was a scientist and one was just like a local hiker. Um, and yeah, they went and they explored all of these mountains and they made them accessible and like documented them and They've created the statue for them, and then that's the hotel Skugakin, and we're hoping that they have a restaurant for a beer. Yay for beer! Cheers! <laughs> they let us come inside. <laughs> they probably shouldn't have. Yes, we've got a feast going on. <laughs> Same as bar. It was good to us. It was good. Portree. Here we come. Here we come. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you sound really enthused. <laughs> uh, David had two beers. Oh yeah, I forgot that you did. Shush. <laughs> <laughs> so this little section could be six to eight kilometers. And we're going to be following a trail along Lake Skagakin. And the campsite here is Skagakin Campsite, if you can. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous, where you can camp with the sheep and with an amazing mountain view. We would have camped here last night if we were way faster and <laughs> less photo takey. Here Let's we are. Go. Less photo takey. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> we're watching seals along the trail and one of them just jumped and I've never seen a seal like jump that high 
think I've seen them kind of like splatter around, but do it again. There's a whole family of them down there. Oh, there it is. Oh, there's two. Oh, there's no, there's like tons of them. Cool. Wow. That's a treat. That's nice. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey. Let's take a look here. It's a great place to chill. <laughs> it is. This actually is lovely. This is what I was wanting, like, way back then. That felt like it also didn't end. Yeah. It is so different from home, just like being able to see so far. We just made it through that small section to Panshoran. And now we're going to go through the Braes on hard concrete road towards Portree and find a campsite. <laughs> Hi. We just found a wicked campsite outside of Portree after a long grueling walk. How many walk. kilometers, Ashley? 30.87! Ah! What a day. We're going to bed. Oh, Good night. Tomorrow we're going to poetry. <laughs> Just like right over there. What a big freaking day. <laughs> You got some blisters? I got a few, uh, one blister and one like start of one. So, just doing a little tape you're, job here. You're a mess. I'm about to do surgery. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see my feet. <laughs> no, David's are the worst. <laughs> On a level of like, basically like, Almost a corpse. David's are, <laughs> David's are there, and then <laughs> Ashley's are like slightly going, deteriorating. You need like a viewer discretion. Yeah, viewer discretion yeah. advised <laughs> before showing your feet. People, people that don't like shots of feet. You got a bad one on the heel there. He's still well. No, I got him before we left. He's still healing. So I only have one more blister patch. Is my issue. I got some today. Yeah. So I'm like, where do I use this one last blister patch? And I think I'm gonna use it on this guy, which I already popped. It's just my feet are so wet each day. They're gonna be peeling for weeks. Setting off for day four. This uh, campsite was good to us. Today we have to find myself a new sleeping mat because mine imploded overnight. This is my mat situation. Defective thermorest. It's just all of these chambers here. This is my room. This is the bottom of the mat. It's an expensive and supposed to be a really good mat too. It's a thermos. Feeling stiff, feeling achy. But a nice three something kilometers in the portrait should limber us up. Monster, did you? I'm gonna have a sandwich and some chips and this. It's gonna feel like a proper lunch. You monster. Shout out to the gentleman over at the Isle of Sky Sea Tours because I walked over, explained our situation with David's mat and the fact everything's closed on a Sunday, and they just gave us these two foam rolls free of charge. Is that anything to keep us off the ground? He wished us luck. So, haven't done their sea tour, maybe someday, but uh, five out of five star review for uh, friendliness and yeah.
We just resupplied in poultry. Not a whole lot open for a Sunday, mainly just the co-op. But we got most of the things we need. Couldn't find any duct tape. Uh, now we're heading along the coast, gonna hit the trail along the coast to the old man of store. Where is the Can I have some? Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Is it a drinking well or just like a wishing well? Yeah, that's a drinking well. Made it to the top of this plateau. It's just a complete bog. Thing of this trail. Yeah. <laughs> Getting a little taste of everything on this one. Yeah. You can see where we camped last night. Poor tree. And then store where we're heading. This is crazy. Gotta go all the way down this and all the way up the other side. Just for funds. All for funds. Want some pocket candy? Sure. You have your own. <laughs> Tough stuff, man. Tough stuff. That's amazing, though. That's wild. This big beam of light on poetry. <laughs> Everyone in poetry's like, oh! <laughs> Happy hiker! Happy <laughs> hiker! <laughs> That's some <laughs> MacGyver stuff there. <laughs> oh, they're so sore and wrinkly. Milk the water bottle. Finally at the trailhead to Old Man's store. There is way more things here than last time. They've got a coffee shop, they got bathrooms, they got a bigger parking lot. They also have they've banned camper vans, at least from this parking lot, maybe you can further down. It's a popular spot nowadays. It's about sunset time, however there's not really a sunset tonight and we're going to be heading up and then over to find a respectable camping spot. We so. did all of this today. Basically, yeah we did. That's crazy. That's so cool to look back on. Lots of bogs, oh my Lots gosh. Of bogs. The size of these steps. They're crazy. We're pretty much out of daylight, so I'm gonna try and find a campsite around here for something flat and not wet. Camp for this evening. Right by my store. Don't recommend camping here. Uh, not that flat, and we'll probably have to get out here really early because there'll be people coming along first thing. But it'll do, there's a water source. I think this is the last water source uh, for like 20 kilometers, unless we get lucky and find some little streams. Always bury your poop and pack in, pack out all your TP and stuff because it friggin' sucks that nice places can be ruined by dumb campers. We're kind of being dumb campers by close camping here, but we're gonna be super respectful and then be out of here at a really good time. I thought that this lake was like way over the so ridge did I. more. I we didn't think it was this close. Yeah. 
Oh, there's also, we saw like kind of camping spots, like places to be discreet down by the dam as well. So that might be a, a better spot too with water source. We're not going back down there. <laughs> Heck no. Morning, buddy. Morning. It's very wet out there today. The old man is in the clouds. Oh. Oh, you can't see him, but he's just over the edge there. Just packing all this up. You can just see the top of it there. This helped a lot, but my back still hurts because they're pretty firm. <laughs> Today is a very big day because we're going to be doing the Trottenish Ridge, which is about 28 kilometers from Store to Flodigary. We're not sure if we're going to do the full 28. Uh, there's not a lot of water along this picturesque, iconic ridge. Unfortunately, there's not going to be a lot of views from what we can see too. So it's going to be a strategic day of just hiking as much as we can up and down along the ridge and getting to a water source, which we believe uh, we're sh which should be at the Kerrang, which is another viewpoint. So that's the game plan for today. We're all feeling like it's day five. I feel great upper body. My feet feel like bricks. Let's go. It's gonna be a long day looking like this. Yeah. This is so crazy. <laughs> I don't even know what you can see right now. There's probably water all on it. Are you having fun, David? <laughs> so since it happened this morning, uh, it's now 4.30. It has just been ripping wind and rain, and it's been a suffer fest. And finally, we're out of the clouds, and it's letting up a little bit. A little morale boost right now. This is what we've been missing for hours. Cliffs and cliffs and cliffs. Wow. Look at you. This has, without a doubt, been one of the hardest hiking days I've ever done. However, the views are definitely a reward near the end. We're not done yet, but near the end. Holy. <laughs> for tonight. That was one of the hardest days of hiking I have ever done and I'm very grateful to be in a tent right now. <laughs> I'm like, oh, day five was tough. Like the distance, the ups, the downs, the rain, the wind, not being able to even see a view. Like even when we, when it, we finally got to see a view, like how rewarding the hike was when you could see a view, like it, it was like, oh, this pain is worth it. But like nine out of 10 of the hike was like no view. So <laughs> it was really hard to see how it was worth the suffering. Yeah. It was a pain cave day is what I consider it, it to sure be. Was. But now we have a home and we're only about 15 kilometers till the finish line. Thank you.
Day six, we woke up with rain, no view, but thankfully it has started to clear so we have a little bit of a view. And today we have about 17, 15, 17 kilometers. So we're gonna be going through the Kerrang, which is here. There's a visitor park as well over there. So it's a very popular tourist destination. We've been here before. And we're gonna hike through and then all the way to Flodigary and then up and around the coast to Runahunish and then down to the bus stop is the game plan. Hopefully the weather's on our side more so than yesterday. We have our cameras at the ready, but protected because we couldn't take a single flipping photo yesterday. It was brutal. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Basics. I feel like I'm just like running on energetic, excited fumes at this point. <laughs> Remember to drink your water, kids. <laughs> I had a breakfast of a sausage roll and cheese this morning. Healthy. Yeah, super healthy. <laughs> Made with local bars. They are a Nova Scotia company and they're like a really good energy granola bar. That's good ingredients that I can actually stomach. So we just made it to the road in Flodigary. Rain is pretty bad right now, um, but uh, someone just told us that around one o'clock it's gonna go away and clear up. So we've got a little road walk through this area and then we hook on to the coast. Okay. The final leg. Yeah, we're going down to the left. <laughs> this is it, the last uh, 10 to 15 kilometers, I guess. Yeah. We'll find out what it is. <laughs> If any one is accurate, I hope it's this one. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's blue skies. We just went through all of this in the clouds. Holy wow. smokes! Oh, look at that blue patch! Turquoise! It's a little scary! <laughs> that little tiny speck on the horizon. That's where we're going. That's the Bothy. I mean, I, I think it is anyway, I'm pretty sure. We're almost done! Teleport me there. Go, Skyler, go. We made it to the Bothy. <laughs> yeah. End of the trail. Kind of. I'm really hoping to get off these guys. Look at the way you're walking. <laughs> I still want to walk in on anyway. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi there. We just want to come check it out. <laughs> no, just the one. Yes. Well, unfortunately, the Bothy is occupied and there's only two bunks in there, not enough space for. Uh, five of us. So we're gonna push to the road and uh, get a bus back to Portree. If we make it. If we make it, because oh. there's one more bus left. So we're running. Go oh. Skyler, we're running. There's the phone booth. We did it. We're done, dude. You did it. Did it. I've never pushed that hard. Wait, let's go take care of your feetsies. Yes, please. I don't want to be on them for a day. Excellent, thank you. Ah, I can't believe we, we got that. So, this is the end of the video. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We uh, we made it to the phone booth, the uh, official end of the trail. But uh, as we got there, the bus 
just turned the corner, so we, it was the last bus of the day. So we had to take it. We didn't have a choice. <laughs> we didn't even get to celebrate or like yeah, get a selfie get a with a phone booth or, anything. or yeah. anything. It was just like a very quick like, woo, on the bus. <laughs> and then we got into Portree and we missed our last bus back to Broadford. So we actually ended up having to camp another night, but we didn't film it because we were pretty exhausted by then. But it was, how would you describe the Sky Trail? It's just amazing. It was beautiful and hard. Harder than I expected. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely don't attempt it if you're not used to backpacking and um, backcountry camping. It was how I would say one of the most beautiful and challenging outdoor adventures I personally have ever done. It definitely pushed me to my limits every single day and I felt it every single day. I felt the pain, I felt the grind, but at the same time I've never been happier when hiking. It filled my soul and filled my cup and I just felt mentally and incredible. Um, it was very, it was very rewarding every single day. And I mean, the landscape changes and this unofficial trail is basically created originally by a photographer. So it brings you to all of these incredible backcountry sites and places that when you visit Sky, you wouldn't get to see from the road and that was very special to us because we've visited quite a few times now but to get to see it from this perspective and get to see it places that are so wild was pretty incredible and very very fulfilling i would highly recommend it if you're going and you're looking for a multi-day adventure on in scotland uh, please maybe scope out the sky trail and see if it's right for you and plan accordingly. <laughs> if you were to do it again, what piece of equipment would you take that you kind of wish you had or something that you wish you had? For better me, sh uh, shoes, sorry. Okay, so for me, I would say better shoes. Um, definitely like waterproof type boots, but make sure that they're not new and like that they're well worn because blisters are kind of like something that I feel like you're definitely going to develop regardless. I mean, I had sneakers, I have a whole tendonized thing, but anyways, better footwear for sure. And make sure like you're gonna be in box, no matter what time of year. Feet are gonna be wet. You're gonna be wet. Um, Even if you have a waterproof shoe, the water's gonna get through eventually. Waterproof pants, waterproof jacket, all of like the waterproof gear, as well as layers for underneath um, is so, so important because we used every piece of our clothing and gear and it's what kept us going each and every day and all of the elements and layers are important too because we did have days where it was weirdly warm and we were wearing t-shirts. Um, headlights and water filters, of course. Uh, hiking poles are, we all relied on our hiking poles I found. What else? A rain cover for your pack? Yeah, for me it was a, a foam mat so that I, oh, yeah. <laughs> so that my, <laughs> none of my therm rests are gonna burst on me and I'll be yeah. sleeping on the ground. And De then reliable another thought gear. would be like, I brought Crocs, they didn't really fit me that well, um, <laughs> but actually a pair of kind of Crocs or sneakers that I could wear on the roads so that yeah. your feet don't heat up when you're in your like wet shoes, I think. So like, when you hit the road, you could switch to your other shoes that are like more breathable <laughs> and your feet don't heat up. So. Yeah. Navigation too. We did meet some folks hiking on the Sky Trail that like didn't exactly have a uh, great navigation or know where they're going and definitely thought that it was like a well-marked trail. It is not, um, especially the day on the Trotnish Ridge when we had zero visibility, have maps downloaded, have a backup um, like printed map, have like numerous ways that if one way of navigation goes down, you have a backup because some, yeah, that day that we had no views, I mean, I couldn't tell. I was just relying on GPS. Where we were completely. going. And we look back at our route and I'm like, I never would have known that we were right beside that. Like, I never would have known because we couldn't see like five feet in front of us. It was crazy and the wind's pelting you and everything. But I'm not really selling it, am I? <laughs> but just be aware that you'll probably experience all of the weather conditions. Eh? Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this video brings you some information and inspiration about Scotland, about the Isle of Skye, and about the Sky Trail. We cannot wait to go on our next multi-day hiking adventure. We don't know where that will be, but there's also a lot more on, in Scotland that we want to check out too. So uh, maybe you'll see a video from back in Scotland on a, another trail someday. So. Bye. Bye.